How about number three? Why did Claudius order the Jews out of Rome? You're reading through the book of Acts in Acts chapter 18, and suddenly you read something, Claudius expelled all the Jews from Rome. You go, where did this come from? Okay. He's the Roman emperor from 41 to 54 AD. And here's what we learn in Luke. He leaves a puzzle. Luke, of course, writes the book of Acts, and right after Paul is on Mars Hill, and he comes down off Mars Hill in Athens, it says, after these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, parenthetically, because Claudius commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. So Aquila and Priscilla got booted out of Rome. Why? Because Claudius booted all the Jews out of Rome. But why? Who is Claudius and why did he command the Jews to leave Rome? Suetonius helped solve this. Who's Suetonius? Suetonius is a Roman historian writing about the 12 Caesars. So there were 12 Caesars that he's writing about and one of the Caesars he's writing about is Claudius. There's a whole, whole book on Claudius. And here's what it says in the book. Because the Jews at Rome caused continuous disturbances at the instigation of Crestus, he expelled them, Claudius did, from the city. Who is Crestus? That's another word for Christ. And he, who's he? That's Claudius. Expelled them, uh, them meaning the Jews. And then from the city, that's what Luke says in Acts chapter 18, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. So here you have a Roman historian just parenthetically verifying what Luke has written. Is Luke, are, are, Luke and Cla are Luke and Suetonius somehow in cahoots together? No, Luke is writing prior to 62 AD or about 62 AD, maybe before that, Suetonius is writing in about 117 AD. So they're, what, 50-something years apart. They don't even know each other. But they're given details that interlock, that interlock. So what's the disturbance? We don't know what the disturbance was, but it could be because, of course, the Jews didn't like the Christians claiming that Jesus is the Messiah. And wherever Paul went, you know, he got into trouble. He got into fights and everything. And and apparently the church at Rome may have caused some commotion with the Jews or vice versa. Of course, that's one of the reasons Paul writes the book of Romans, right? He's writing to the church there at Rome. So all this fits together like a jigsaw puzzle. Now, you've got Josephus. Now you also have Suetonius, and he's verifying what Luke says because Luke has written Acts. How about Herod? Did Herod really kill John the Baptist? What's the story of John the Baptist? How does he get killed? Herod Antipas, that's this guy. He's the son of Herod the Great, beheaded John the Baptist. This is the guy that Christ stood before. Okay, he beheaded John the Baptist. Why? What, what, what did John do that Herod's, this guy, wife didn't like? Discuss their extramarital... Yes, here's what this guy did. He liked his stepbrother's wife. So he got his stepbrother's wife to marry him. And John the Baptist said that's an illegitimate marriage. And she didn't like it. So when her daughter, Salome, danced for Herod, he said, I'll give you anything you want up to half my kingdom. And she said, because her mother said in her ear, Tell Herod, I want the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And so he couldn't go back on his word. He sent the executioner and cut off John's head in prison and brought it to her. Now, how do we even know this name Salome? Is it in any of the Bible? Any of the Bible anywhere? Any, no, you know what you know who tells us who the name is? Josephus. Josephus tells. There's another verification. All right. So, did he really kill John the Baptist? We know that Mark, Luke, Matthew all say yes. Here's Mark's account. Uh, the king, Herod Antipas, was greatly distressed but because of his oath and dinner guests. He did not want to refuse her, so he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. Can you imagine that? Isn't that kind of brutal? Here, Mom. Here he is. Now, what does Josephus say about him? 
Josephus writing 40 or so years later. Now, some of the Jews thought that the destruction of Herod's army came from God and that very justly as a punishment of what he did against John, that called the Baptist. For Herod killed him, who was a good man and commanded the Jews to exercise virtue, both as to righteousness towards one another and piety towards God, and so to come to baptism. So here you got John the Baptist being spoken of by Josephus. Now, is there any way Luke Mark or Matthew could have had Josephus 40-something years later write about this? They don't even know this guy. They're dead already. So, now you have Josephus verifying the John the Baptist account. The John the Baptist, the Baptist account appears in Matthew, Mark, and Luke.